Hey everyone and welcome to the August Sew Along. This month we are sewing the very tropical and fruity pineapple tote bag. The blocks come in three different sizes, the 4x4, 5x5 and 6x6. They are created using a beautiful herringbone effect and are perfect for using those scrap pieces of fabric that you have laying around. To create a bag the same size as ours, you will need six of the top leaf blocks as well as six of the bottom pineapple blocks. So 12 blocks in total. Starting with your first leaf block, stitch down the first piece of batting to the hooped up cutaway stabilizer. Using your applique scissors, trim around the perimeter of the batting as close to the stitches as possible without cutting any of the stitching. Now in the provided instructions, there is a diagram included which indicates the position of all of the fabric pieces. Refer back to this diagram if needed. As you can see here, we are stitching down the first piece of applique. This is piece two on the diagram. We are only going to trim away the fabric from the two angled edges and making sure we leave the excess fabric in the seams. Use our flip and fold technique to stitch down the fabric for piece four. Then using your applique scissors, trim away the fabric from the two angled edges, but make sure you leave the excess fabric in the seams. Repeat the same flip and fold technique as well as the trimming technique that we use for piece four for piece six. Stitch the placement line for piece eight. Place the required fabric right side up on top of the placement line and then stitch down. Trim all four edges of this piece of applique and then begin the satin stitch. We are now going to repeat the flip and fold technique for the remaining 10 pieces of fabric. These pieces of fabric will create the rest of the background and leaves for the pineapple. When stitching these remaining pieces of fabric, please always refer back to the instructions. The instructions will let you know where to trim each piece of fabric and when to stitch the satin stitches around the leaves. Now that you have all of the fabric stitched down in place, it is now time to begin the quilting. The quilting will be stitched on each piece of fabric and are the last steps of the block. Once you have completed all of these quilting steps, remove the block from the hoop and trim back the seams to about half an inch. Your first leaf block is complete and you will need to make another five of these blocks. Moving on to making the bottom pineapple blocks, begin by stitching and trimming the batting. Then stitch the placement lines for the two background pieces. Place fabric A right side up on top of the placement line and stitch down. 
Then using your applique scissors, trim only the inside curved edge, making sure you leave the excess fabric in the seams. Repeat the same process for fabric B on the right hand side of the hoop. Embroider the quilting on the two background pieces. We are now up to stitching down the fabric pieces for the pineapple. Just like the top leaf block, there is a diagram in the provided instructions which indicates where each piece of fabric goes. Use the same stitching down and trimming techniques that we use for the leaves now on the pineapple. Now that all of the fabric has been stitched down, begin the quilting on the pineapple. And then, to finish the block off, embroider the satin stitch around the pineapple. Remove the block from the hoop and trim back the seams to about half an inch. Your pineapple block is now complete. You will need to make Five more of these blocks, three for the back of the bag and then two more for the front of the bag. Lay out all of your blocks in the correct order on your work surface. Place the two blocks of the first pineapple right sides together and then pin along one edge. Move over to your sewing machine and stitch the two together along the edge that you have pinned. Iron open the seam on the back of the blocks and then repeat the same joining process for the remaining two pineapples of the front of the bag. Now to join the pineapples to each other, place the first two pineapples right sides together and pin along one edge. Using your sewing machine, stitch the two together. Iron open the seam on the back of the blocks and then repeat the same process to join on the third pineapple. You will also need to repeat the above joining process to make the back of the bag. Firstly measure the length of the front of the bag. You want to make sure you are cutting the bottom border to the same length. To add support and structure, we suggest adding cutaway stabiliser and batting to the wrong side of the bottom border. We use spray adhesive to attach these. Place the front of the bag on top of the bottom border, right sides together and pin together. Move over to your sewing machine and stitch the two together. Fold over the bottom border, iron flat and then top stitch to give a neat finish. Using a rotary cutter and ruler, trim any excess fabric from the sides of the bottom border so they are in line with the front of the bag. Repeat the same pinning and stitching process to attach the back of the bag to the opposite edge of the bottom border. Now place the outside of your tote bag on top of the lining fabric with wrong sides together, pinning the perimeter to secure the two together. Using a rotary cutter and ruler, trim the two shorter edges of the lining fabric, leaving an extra half inch of fabric, and then trim the two longer edges flush with the outside of the tote bag. 
unpin the outside of the tote bag and put aside for later use. Fold the lining fabric in half wrong sides together and give the fold a good press with the iron. This will leave you with a crease down the middle. Use this crease as a cutting guide and cut your lining fabric in half. Place the two halves right sides together matching up all of the edges. Pin along the two short edges as well as one of the long edges. On the long edge make sure you leave a gap of about 7 inches. This will be where we turn the bag right sides out later on. Move over to your sewing machine and stitch together. You should be left with one long edge unsewn and a gap in the second long edge. Now fold the outside of your tote bag right sides together and pin along the two shorter edges. Use your sewing machine to stitch a half inch seam along these two pinned edges. With a pair of scissors, very carefully cut through that folded seam on the bottom border on both sides, making sure you do not cut through any of the stitching. This step will allow us to open those two side seams flat. Flatten the first bottom corner and using a ruler, mark a 45 degree angle along the seam. How far in you mark make the mark will depend on how deep you want the base of the bag to be. We went for about two and a half to three inches either side of the flattened seam. Pin in place to secure and use your sewing machine to stitch straight across the marked line. Repeat this same process for the second bottom corner and then once complete trim the excess fabric to about a quarter of an inch from the stitching on both corners. We are now going to repeat this process for the lining of the bag as well. Make sure the lining is left wrong sides out and the bag is turned right sides out. To make the straps of the bag, you will need two strips of fabric and two strips of fusible or regular cutaway, all being cut to the same measurements. Iron on the cutaway to the matching fabric strip or use spray adhesive like we did to attach. Starting with one strap at a time, fold the two long edges in about half an inch and wrong sides together and then iron the folds. Fold the whole strap in half wrong sides together and again iron the fold. Move over to your sewing machine and top stitch the open long edge closed. We also chose to stitch the opposite edge as well. Make sure when you do do this step you are matching the top and bobbin thread to the colour of your strap. Repeat this same process for the second strap and make sure they are both the same length. 
We will now attach one strap to the front of the bag and placing the two ends of the strap one inch out from the two middle seams. Pin in place. Repeat this same process to attach the second strap to the back of the bag. We also chose to stay stitch these straps in place. This is completely optional but also recommended. Now slip the lining over the bag. Make sure the lining is still wrong sides out and the bag is still right sides out. Match the two top raw edges as well as the side seams and pin together right around the top of the lining and the bag. Move over to your sewing machine and stitch the two together along the edge that you have pinned. Make sure you are sewing from the inside of the bag. This will allow you to follow the stitching. Pull the outside of the bag through the gap in the lining that you left earlier. Your bag and lining will both then be right sides out. Push the lining into the bag and with the iron, give the edges right around the top of the bag a good press. Move over to your sewing machine and top stitch along the top of the bag. This will keep the lining sitting flat. Make sure the top and bobbin thread are matching the colour of the lining and bag. At the same time, also fold in the raw edges of the gap in the lining and stitch closed. And there you have it, your very tropical pineapple tote bag is now complete. We hope you enjoyed this month's sew along and we can't wait to see everyone's bags down at the beach or with a nice cocktail by the pool.